Hi guys, so the fact that we are doing puzzles from the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship 2023, it's only appropriate that I wear my puzzle hoodie that I got made there. Hi guys, today I decided to do all of the puzzles from World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship 2023. Well, the ones that I've got at home anyway. So I've got five, there is nine in total from individual round because I wasn't planning on doing the pairs and all of that because I just wanted to see how my times are gonna be, if I improved a little, maybe or you know all of those things and also there's a puzzle exchange event coming up and i literally have no puzzles for exchange so i was like what's the quickest way to get puzzles for exchange that's also one of the reasons why i decided to do that today but i honestly like i don't know if i'm happy about the results that i got or like disappointed i have no idea but it was intense <laughs> that's all i can say so I don't want to spoil too much before getting into it, so I'm just going to start with the first puzzle. The first puzzle is from Group C and the title of this one is The Archaeologist's Desk. So this was the first puzzle I ever did at a competition and honestly when I pulled it out of the bag I wanted to cry. <laughs> because it's just... I don't... I mean... Okay, I prefer busy puzzles to like completely empty puzzles, you know, like Orange Hell. But this one is just a little bit too busy and it's out of my comfort zone because I tend to like when I can sort, you know, even if I don't sort, even when I do full flip, when there is like specific colors, it's easy for me to eliminate those pieces and, you know, just work on a chunk. But with this one, it was all over the place. Yeah, I wasn't looking forward to doing it again, I have to admit that. So I decided to tackle this puzzle the same way the second time around. I don't know why, but it just felt like there is no sorting that has to be done with this puzzle, so I didn't really know what else to do. So obviously I would flip all the pieces over and eliminate the frame as I went. And then one thing that was pointed out to me at the competition after I finished the puzzle is that maybe I focused on colors too much and I didn't focus on details. So in that way I took a bit of a different approach and I started like with the book and anything that stood out with like either texture or color or something like that and I think it was a lot easier after I did the frame because then the puzzle started to close itself up and it became a lot quicker to you know find the pieces that I was looking for. I do have to say that knowing my time from the first round it did stress me out quite a bit because there was like this extra pressure like I wasn't competing with 90 minutes I was competing with 56 minutes so I did find myself getting more and more stressed the closer I was getting to 56 minutes which definitely didn't help. My new time is 57 minutes and 34 seconds, which basically drops me to 24th place. And this only goes to show that you're not always gonna get better time when doing the puzzle the second time around. Now, there could be multiple reasons why my time was slower this time around. One of them could be that I didn't have the actual sunlight. I only had a natural light because it was already 4 p.m. and the sun was going down by the time I did this puzzle. Or, I actually work better under pressure. I honestly do not know, but I'm still happy with my time. I still managed to keep it under one hour, which is my goal for this year's competition anyway. So I'm not gonna complain. I did hope that I'm gonna improve, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not disappointed with my time at all. I'm just disappointed with the fact that I was slower, but like, I don't know how to explain. I just, there was just this expectation that every time you do a puzzle, you're just gonna become quicker and quicker. And that's one thing that I think threw me off the most. Like the time is still good, like 57 minutes for a 500 piece puzzle. I still like my time. It's just that, you know, expectations meet reality, I guess. The second one is from Group B and the title of this one is New York Postcard. You might be wondering why I have the wrong box for this one, but basically Vicky brought the puzzle from the UK and she didn't bring the box with her. And I brought this puzzle with me with the box and I gave it to someone and they took it without the box. So I decided it's still probably better to have a box than no box, you know, so I can exchange the puzzle. But I have a printout. So yeah, that's basically the puzzle. So I haven't actually done this puzzle at the competition, so I cannot, you know, improve my time or unimprove my time. <laughs> But on the bright side, there is going to be no time pressure for me. It's still going to be like 90 minutes. We've done this puzzle with Donna Louise literally the night before the competition. I think they turned off the lights for us. Maybe we've tried it twice. I don't actually remember. But basically, we've done the puzzle. I was doing this section 
And honestly, now when I was redoing the puzzle, it didn't really help, I didn't remember anything. So I basically have nothing to compare myself to, so we are just gonna crack on with the puzzle and see the results after. So London Postcard is the one puzzle that holds my fastest time so far. I think it was 39 minutes when I did it the fifth time. So obviously going into this New York puzzle, I kind of had high expectations for it. But I have to say that doing the London Postcard so many times, it was kind of throwing me off when doing the New York Postcard one now. Because there were so many similarities, but then there is so many different things. And I kind of thought I knew what I was looking for and I knew what I was doing, but then it wasn't the same thing so I actually needed some time to adjust and rethink this entire puzzle and then I remember how I did the London postcard and I started focusing on like the small details I have to admit though that I think Statue of Liberty was a little bit more difficult for me to finish than Big Ben I don't know why because at the first glance it seems like it should be the opposite but maybe it's just because I've done it so many times they became easier for me at the end of it so I finished the puzzle in 50 minutes and 57 seconds, which would place me on 21st spot exactly like Sarah. I'm still around 20th place, which is good because it's like the top quarter of the group, which I'm really happy about. If it stays like that for next year, I'm gonna be quite pleased with that. Nearly 51 minutes, I think that's a great time. I'm quite pleased with that. I know I've already done half of the puzzle before. It probably helps, I don't know, but I'm quite happy with my time. I know that this puzzle is not really like a true representation of a 500 piece puzzle because it is one of the easiest one. So I'm not gonna take this one and say, yes, I improved my time, <laughs> like I managed to get it under one hour, I'm nearly on 45 minutes, I'm not gonna say that, because I know that puzzles are not usually that simple. But I'm definitely pleased with my time and I wouldn't mind if, you know, one of those kind of puzzles is gonna be at the competition next year, because this was the easiest puzzle of the entire competition. Yeah, let's move on to the next puzzle now. The next puzzle is from Group E and the title of this one is Springtime in Paris. So this is the puzzle that when I saw it, I was like, I wanted it! I know it sounds ridiculous because people who were doing it were like, the sky was a complete and utter nightmare. But I actually really enjoyed it. I don't know why I like it so much because when I was doing results from the competition, this one was actually more difficult based on the results than it was the archaeologist's desk. I still liked it though. <laughs> It's just when you flip all the pieces over, it's so easy when, you know, pieces stand out and this one is definitely one of those puzzles. So again, I have no times to compare myself to from the competition because I wasn't actually in that group, but I did do this puzzle with Donna Louise when we were in Madrid and I actually really enjoyed putting it together. I only did the lower part of the puzzle and we actually had a really nice thing going because I was like, I need everything green and she would go and eliminate all the pieces and just pass it on to me. So she eliminated all of the searching time for me, which obviously wasn't the case this time. So that was something that I had to do. I think there was quite a lot of searching going on in this puzzle. But I think when you focus on like the small details, it becomes so much easier. But I definitely really enjoyed this puzzle. It was the one that I was looking forward to do as a speed run. And I was really happy with my time as well when I finished it. So my time for this puzzle was 58 minutes and 43 seconds, which basically placed me 10th. Now, how amazing is that? I know, I know. I just improved so much. No, I was thinking about it, actually. I think it just goes to show how much the light is important. Even though when I was doing this puzzle, I didn't have any natural light, which was also the case at the dome, but I did have still really good, you know, unnatural light, which I don't think was the case at the dome. I know everyone's got equal light, so it's still equal for everyone, it's not unfair to anyone. I think the lighting at the dome at 7 p.m. when they were doing the puzzle wasn't great. So I wouldn't really, you know, count the 10th place like I actually got it, because I don't think I would if people actually did the puzzle earlier. But I'm still gonna, you know, enjoy it. <laughs> I'm still gonna pretend like I would end it up 10th. I don't know, it just feels good. But I really enjoyed the puzzle, I have to say. Like, it got a little bit tricky. I have to do shape sorting for the sky and then the flowers as well. But everything else was so straightforward and I think it was so much easier as well because I had literally no pressure with this puzzle. It was only one minute longer than the archaeologist's desk. And yeah, I was quite happy with that, honestly. Like, I wanted to get this puzzle at the competition. When I saw it come out of the bag, I was like, oh, I wanted this. I don't know, but I think it's just a mental thing with me. When I see something that is 
quite nicely separated and you still got detail. I just find myself more comfortable and knowing that I'm gonna be able to finish the puzzle. When we did archaeology's desk, I was like, it's just busy, I don't know how to separate, I don't know what to do. Obviously, I still managed to finish the puzzle, but it's just, those puzzles are really relaxing for me as opposed to, you know, these ones. <laughs> but yeah, those are basically the puzzles from preliminary rounds. And now we've got two more puzzles to move on to, and they are both from semi-finals. So let's just start with the first one. The first puzzle is from round two of semi-finals and the title of this one is Ocean. The reason why I decided to do this puzzle first is because I wanted to wait with that one. I didn't want to see the results, especially after being slower for the archaeologist's desk. Again, I've done this puzzle before the competition started because Vicky Broy from the UK and me and Donna Louise did it as a past practice. And the good thing about this puzzle was that I didn't have a time to compare myself to. There was no pressure on it because obviously when you do it as a pair, you cannot compare that time to doing it individually. But what we basically did when we did the pairs run, we sorted the pieces first and then started the assembly. So I wasn't really sure if I should go for sorting or full flip because I remember at the competition people struggled a little bit with space the ones that did full flip but obviously I'm not sharing a table with anyone and my table is maybe slightly bigger than the one at the competition so I was like I might as well you know try the other way so obviously I was flipping all of the pieces over and eliminating the frame and then just started from the middle because I think it was the most obvious thing to do. And I also think it's really important that you focus on a lot of detail that I kind of remembered from the first time doing the puzzle. But those like the coral reefs and all of that, I knew that there's none of it throughout the puzzle. So anytime I saw something of it, I knew it's going to belong to the middle. And after I've done the middle section, I think it was quite easy to move on because just doing it color by color was the easiest thing to do. And normally Normally when I'm doing gradient puzzles I would say that red and orange are my least favorite ones because it's so difficult to see the difference in the color but with this puzzle I actually started with the red which was a little bit interesting and then like moving on to the pink one and I think colors in this puzzle are just a lot clearer the only times I struggled with the colors is when you've got fish that has different colored tails those fishes were basically the worst for me so my time for this puzzle is 59 minutes, 58 seconds and 51 milliseconds, is it? I was literally one second away from being over one hour, so I was really pleased with my time. I didn't expect to finish this one under one hour, but it just filled me up with a lot of confidence because this one took me a lot longer, well, a lot longer, it took me over an hour to finish it. But it's a bit different concept because this one's got gradient in sections, which I think makes it a lot easier. As opposed to this one when it's got, you know, the gradient going around. So I was really pleased with my time and it would place me 35th. But again, when they were doing the puzzle, it was a little bit darker for them as well. And I was doing that this morning, which meant that the sun was out. So it's a little bit like... I can see that even when I was doing last year's puzzle, well two years ago's puzzles for preparation for last year's competition. Now this is becoming complicated now. So when I was doing puzzles from 2022 to get ready for 2023 competition and I was checking my times, I can see how much the actual light influences the results. Like that was really obvious with the springtime in Paris puzzle and I think for this one as well. The reason why I'm saying that is because if you've never been to the competition and you want to check your times and you know see how you would do, you should probably, if you want to redo the puzzles from last year's competition, you should probably check live stream and see what the light was and then try to get the light similar to what it was at a competition last year and that would probably make it a little bit more accurate. Unless you just want to do it to boost your confidence then take the Storm 1, you know, from Group F when they did it at 9 p.m. or something like that and do it like at noon with the sun shining and all of that and then your results are gonna be brilliant. I'm just talking nonsense now, let's move on to the last puzzle. The last puzzle from the competition is from round one of semi-finals and the title of this one is Pokeball. Leaving the best for last, huh? No, just kidding. But yeah, this is the puzzle that I actually really enjoyed at the competition and I think I did quite well with it as well. But doing it the second time around again, like I mentioned earlier, I knew what my time was. I had one hour, eight minutes and eight seconds the first time around, which placed me 55th, which I was really happy about actually. And I was one of the rare people, I think. Well, I didn't see everyone, but from what I've seen on live streams, 
I was one of the rare people that actually did sorting for this puzzle. So when I was doing the puzzle, Joao was sitting next to me. So I saw him do full flip when I was doing full sort and on my time lapse, you can see that he struggled with space a little bit. So that's why I was like, not sure what to do with the other puzzle. But my table is big enough here. I didn't have to share with anyone and I didn't struggle with space. You know what? I had good lighting at the competition. I have good lighting today. I did full sorts at the competition. Why not do a full flip today? Because actually the light is the same, well, similar. So that definitely shouldn't influence how quick I was. But I decided to try the different technique this time. I don't think I would go for full flip method at the competition because I still think there is a bit like space there and also it could just become a little bit crowded and you could start you know dropping pieces on the floor and all of that so I think with those larger puzzles from Ravensburger I would just avoid doing that but nothing stops me for trying at home so that's why I decided that I might use a different technique on this puzzle the second time around so when I was doing the full flip, I decided to eliminate the frame and the second row because the second row is really obvious on this puzzle. So starting with the purple and then making my way out of the puzzle, it was basically the same technique I used at the competition, except I didn't have pieces sorted. I think this became a little bit complicated when I came to like yellow slash orangey slash greeny. I didn't really see that much color difference. At one point, I have to admit, when I saw how much of the puzzle I have done and I saw the time, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be like 10 minutes quicker and then it just slowed down so much I cannot tell you and it just goes to show that like having gradient puzzle going from the inside out is a lot more difficult the ocean one has the same amount of yellow than it has purple so in that sense it's a lot easier to solve what really helps with this puzzle is seeing the textures as well but the frame is definitely going to be the most difficult on this puzzle because it's just blue and the only thing that can really help you is just really looking the shape of the prongs and sometimes you could see how thin or thick the light blue line was on the pieces and that could help as well so my new time is one hour seven minutes and two seconds which basically improved my time for five places I'm really happy about that. Like at one point I honestly thought that I'm gonna finish this puzzle in under one hour because it was going so fast but then the frame and all of the, oh it just takes so much time honestly and there's literally nothing you can do about it because it's got nothing like those flowers help a little bit because obviously they section it but I think it would be better with a puzzle like that to maybe have those leaves going a little bit higher up or like put a little bit more I don't know what that is like pepperoni or paprika like to place them a bit further out so you would break the frame as well I think that would definitely help but I'm still very pleased with my time even though it didn't go under one hour but overall I've learned so many things by doing those five puzzles like one thing that is so obvious and I haven't even thought about it before it's like when I'm doing the full flip right and I'm eliminating the frame I would always keep putting it in one corner and I just realized it's so much quicker to just make corners like I've, I've just done it with this one I've done three corners it just helps because you don't have to keep stretching across and I know I'm talking so much but it really helps and also focusing on details is just so important and I think one thing that I've learned as well today is just, you know, relax. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it's just, I was so stressed when I was doing archaeology's desk because I had this pressure that I have to have a better time and I knew that I'm scared of the puzzle. And that wasn't the case with this one because I thought that the time for the first time was really good as well. And it kind of, well, improved only by one minute, but it's still an improvement. Like, I'm telling that to you, it's basically meant for me. But so far, I would say the average for my 500-piece puzzle seems to be around one hour, which I'm really happy with. I do hope that it constantly gets, like, around one hour. But there's only one way to find out, and that's by doing more and more puzzles. So it's time to let go of them. I already have someone that's going to take this puzzle. I'm not sure if I want to let it go. <laughs> Uh, I really like it, but no, I have to. It's okay, I've got too many puzzles. I've just been giving puzzles away now and I even have nothing to exchange, to be honest. But yeah, I've got five puzzles now <laughs> and some more. I'm kind of running out of 500 piece puzzles now, so I'm, I need to get some back. I keep exchanging them for like bigger puzzles because I want to reduce my storage space in the closet, but then I'm like, I kind of have to practice, so I'm probably gonna have to start swapping them for more 500 piece puzzles from now on. So that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye!